that way. Um, okay. So what we want to do, what I want to cover today is I want to cover Google authorship because this is a this is an important piece of the uh, uh, of, of, of building your brand. If you go to, uh, I'm going to just do a Google search here. So let me get Google, do a Google search, and I'm going to do um, leave a negative review. We'll put in leave a negative review. Topic of an article that I did previously. Uh, just scroll down through this, and you'll see here's my here's my article on. <laughs> that's interesting. Thanks, Mike. Copied my article. Actually, he shared my article, which is good. So, so here's the article I wrote on. You know, don't how dare you leave a negative review. But you'll notice that the article has got my picture right there on the article because what it's done is it's attributed Google has through the Google authorship, it's attributed the article published in you know on Google's search results to me and back to my Google Plus page <clears throat> so that now it ties it's ultimately tied my website and my Google Plus presence back together because you see right here it says you know here's the link to the website right here so it's given me it, it's given me author credit for that and that ties everything back to the website which is a huge huge plus for search engine optimization and credibility but the other thing that that happens is if somebody's connected with you um, if somebody's connected with you then in, in Google Plus circles, they're going to see this if they're looking for any kind of topic. And now they begin, they, they start adding that association of you and who you are and your, your expertise. And that creates the, um, and that's what's going to be the huge plus to your brand, to building your brand. So, so I'm going to show you. We're going to go through the authorship and how do you create that authorship, uh, and how do you how do you utilize that? Because that's like I said, it, it's going to be a, a major uh, a major piece. Uh, the other cool thing about the authorship is, you know, when you when you create that, somebody sees it and then share it. Now you've got now I've got double credit for that mm -hmm. because it's it's been shared. My article was shared virally with somebody else mm -hmm. through somebody else. Cool. So, so then it means that everybody who's in one of his circles if they sees not, that. Not sees that even with, if they're not one with, of your circles. Yeah, with my picture in there. Uh, okay, got it. Now the picture comes from your Google Plus. So to start with, you need you need to make sure you've got a photo in Google Plus. So we're gonna go over here to Google Plus. Now like if you've got a uh, Get this a little bigger. If you've got a Gmail account, mm -hmm. you, then you basically have Google Plus. Okay. Um, you know, as long as you've got a Gmail account, that everybody that has Gmail will ultimately has a Google Plus. All they have to do is activate the profile. So you want to go to your Google Plus, and if you log into Gmail. You'll get this bar across the top, and it'll say "plus your name" up here. Yeah. Have you got a Gmail, John? Okay, so you'll have one. Um, so if you've got a Gmail, it, when you log in, you'll see this black bar across the top, and it's the "plus your name" there. Will then take you to your Google Plus. And what you want to do is, if you haven't created a profile, then it'll walk you through the process of creating that profile. Uh, if you if you don't have, I mean, if you have done that. Um, you know, it'll ask you to add your picture, and this is what you want to have because this is what feeds into this is what feeds into the uh, uh, into the Google authorship. Is mine there? Okay. I think so. Let's look at yours and see. Yep. Yeah. Yours is okay. there. Thank you. Yep. So, Stan, yeah. you need to get a picture plugged in. <laughs> Even if we take the picture, I mean, you've got them though. You just need to put it in your. You just need That's to ask yourself. Got calls, just got them there. Oh, I probably. I mean, we've got it off. I've got it on your website. 
Okay. If you need to, if that's all that's holding you up, I just need to give you that because I've got it okay. on the on my on the server okay. where we used it before. How do you do that? What if you have to, what if, how do you take the photo from the website? And put it on? Um, you can take the photo. You can grab the. You can also screen capture the photo. So if you wanted to go to, so if we went to. Uh, See where your picture is here. Is this yours? Yeah. Is that your website? No. Mm -hmm. Joe Corey. That's probably the guy from the University of Missouri in the fraternity house. Drinks won't booze anybody else. <laughs> no, this guy is. Ex so like, you know, you check my name. This shows up. Last time I checked. Was this is uh, extensive training <laughs> and experience in sound design. So that's not him. Um, <laughs> Could be an actor in Brooklyn. Could be. Brooklyn. What's your What's your website address? Uh, www.joecorejobs.com. Jobs. That's right. I knew I left that off. But over the years, though, it's funny. You plug in your name, and all these characters appear. Like, oh my god. Yeah. There's another one of you. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Those are my three beautiful employees up there. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. So uh, I haven't met any of those guys yet. I, you have to introduce me at some point in time. Okay. So all you have to do to grab your picture is. Right click on a PC, okay. save image as. Oh, uh -huh. And that saves it right to your computer and then you can upload it anywhere you want. Oh, okay. So that's that's just a simple right click and save image as and you're good to go. Okay. You're the same way, Stan. You can just grab it that way if you, off your website. Okay. You so can, the SunPost lady hasn't banned me yet from the system. She hasn't, but you're, you're, she hasn't booted you off yet. I found a found check that was under my desk. <laughs> I did write it out. I had, <laughs> did you ever? Did you forward it? I haven't sent it. So I didn't know if I should do, uh, make did, a ten seventy fifth. Did you uh, forward or that stuff that I sent you? Um, not, uh, not yet, only because I had a painting job going on. Okay. <laughs> Things are all just right. Got it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> all right. Life gets in the way. <laughs> Does do that. Yeah. Okay, so. So you've got your Google Plus set up. So that's the first step: is make sure you've got a Google Plus profile created, and that you. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, you now, when I do that, I'm all set to write negative reviews about restaurants. And well, actually, you have to have that. Uh, you have to have that profile. You have to have a Google Plus profile now set up to be able to write reviews in Google for anybody. You can't write them anonymously anymore. So yet, yeah, in essence, you do have to have that. Um, all right, turn that off. Um, I could write a negative review about myself. You, you could, it. well, but it says it's from Joe Corey, so it'd be kind of oh. <laughs> that wouldn't look very good. That's the thing about it. Look, one of the reasons that Google went to that route, and I think it, it's good and bad. It's good in the fact that you got to have that you have to have ownership of a review when you write it. So you know your your competitors can't go in there and write the review because necessarily without creating a bogus profile, because it's going to show who it's from. But it also keeps you from spamming the reviews and saying, "God, this guy is great," you know. And you say it ten times because you got ten different email addresses you can use. It doesn't. It, it prevents a lot of that spam stuff. So that's really helping. I think that's a that's a huge. It's amazing. Uh, I've gotten as far as many nuts as I know. Crazy. <laughs> they pro pro probably haven't found you yet online. That's why. It's good to think about it every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, they can't. They don't know where you're at. Okay, so the first step in the process then to create your Google Plus authorship, the, the, the real plus of the authorship side of it is in your blog. It's from the blog because that's the, that's the current information. Now you can tie your, you, you tie your website, your web page, your, your Google Plus page, your business page, you can tie that back to, to your website and that's one of the processes you, you, you do because uh, like for example, my page. If I go here and I do uh, one of my pages, is, it, is this Google Plus new? Relatively Google new? Plus is it's been about a year. It's been about well, probably a year and a half now that they've been out, but they're really starting to uh, come into their own as far as search engine optimization goes. And they're moving. They're both moving closer together. Google Plus and uh, Facebook are beginning to move closer and closer together. Let's use this one. Switch to this page. 
one of the things that you, it asks you to do is to uh, when you create your profile here for your business page it asks you to link your website mm -hmm. and so when you link your website all, all you're doing is putting a piece of code on the website that says yes this is the this is uh, you know this this identifies the fact that I'm the owner and this website is attached to this Google plus page and so when you do that that ties those two together but what we're trying to do is tie the blog in so we're gonna go so let's go to the let's go to my blog well let's actually go to the dojo's blog um, Being not new here, I might have some stupid questions, but hmm. are you saying in order to do a blog, you need to be in Google Plus? No, you can do the blog without it, but to get the maximum benefit of what the blog can do for you, you want to have, you want to share it into Google Plus. So let's say you do a blog, a blog in the Google Plus. What, what's the number of people that be looking at that? Well, it depends on seven million people or ten million. It depends on the topic. It depends on the keyword that you put in there. Because, for example, this you know that that topic on ninja marketing. If somebody's looking for ninja marketing tips, and I may you know I'm going to show up higher in that because that's got that's what that article was about. Or you know if they're looking at negative reviews and how do you handle negative reviews, then they may they they'll find my article, see it, and and. Then the exposure. Now, if nobody, you know, if the topic is not about something that's people are searching for, then you don't know. But the prop, but the idea is, you don't find the. Uh, they're not going to find your website unless they're looking for your name or you know, maybe the keyword that the company is about. But if you create blog articles, now what you're doing is you're art. You're increasing your visibility and you're increasing your chances that Google will. Find you and rank you higher because you because of the volume of content you share. So if, when you write your book, if you haven't already, a uh, two hundred page book on the latest ninja marketing tips, you could advertise that on your Google Plus. Sure. And how would you go about doing that? Give me just your examples like off the top of your head. Uh, well, come see my new reviews. No, actually, what you do, the way you do it, the way you present it is okay. Let's bring my latest article up here. So here's my latest article. I just posted it this morning. So um, the effect of negative feedback on Facebook. So what the, what this is about is it's about you know the wedding ring wrong? That's, that's, that's you. No, yeah, yeah, that's the same. It's the, no, it's off one of your employees. <laughs> it was your I had your employee oh, modeling. Yeah. The uh, the uh, the article is about uh, Facebook's. Edge rank, which is the factor that determines whether your page, your your post from your Facebook page, makes it into somebody's newsfeed. You know, and we've talked about that before. But it's the art. It's it's the it's the formula that gets your post from your business page visible. So your article could end up in the New York Post. Well, it could. I haven't had one yet, but I'm working on that. You know. Would they? Would, would you suspect they call and ask your permission, or do you think that? Uh... Well, email. Well, more likely, <laughs> more likely than that, it'd get picked up by it, you know. More likely than that, it gets picked up by some of the somebody you know, some of the aggregator services that put stuff in business to business marketing information stuff like that. That's more likely where that stuff shows up. But it could. But usually, those guys write their own stuff, you know. But or steal yours and change it. Or steal it and change it. Yeah, <laughs> steal mine and, okay. and just reward you reward. Have protections against that, do you? So it's not copyrighted. No, you can't. I mean, you. You can't go through the process of copywriting every blog article because it's way too costly and and too much. But each article, every article that I write, has my resource box at the bottom, which says Gary Wagner is the owner of 800 Business Ninja Marketing Strategies Ninja Marketing Dojo. So that's my pitch. So if I took pieces of a book that I wrote or took this all my information and put together in my, you know, in my my Ninja Marketing guide. Uh, then I could, then then I can share pieces of that, and say for more, go read the book at, or go buy my book from. So you use the blog as a teaser, you use it as a as an entry, you use it as a come on types thing where you get, where you're you're introducing information, and you continually feed that positive value information, 
and then people can take it and utilize it from there. Do you, do you personally sh uh, ship stuff to people with the, with the shipping handling involved? You don't do any of that stuff? No, everything's pay electronic. Do you do any PayPal? Yeah. Yeah, the whole dojo's done on PayPal. Yep, everything's done that way. Okay, so so this is the article, but let's let's let me log into the blog here to the back end, and I'll show you how we set this up. Um, so I'm gonna go into the dashboard of the of the site, and this the dashboard is where I. The dashboard is where you go create your information. Uh, come on. Give you blocks and stuff. I'm done, yeah. Stan's a good example of what happens yeah, when. You, then you stop them and then you disappear. Stan's a good example of what happens when you create, when you get prol prolific at blogging. We watched his traffic almost double over about a month's time when he started writing blog articles. Literally, his traffic doubled because of the stuff that we were doing with it, and uh, and he was writing articles, uh, and and it, it it boosted his traffic. Up. Yeah, it was like just once a week. Yeah, and then what happened? It's helped his Google rankings. It, I mean, it helped him in his Google rankings and where he showed up. Uh, but he's kind of slacked off in a while, but uh, and had some other issues. But uh, you you have to keep at it because blogs don't live long. You know they'll, they'll they'll live for a while, but they'll you know they'll usually start to fizzle out after a period of time. But but that's the but that's what happens to it. But one of the advantage one of the things about using the authorship side of it is that actually does that and you know, that will help help reinforce those and tie you know tie it back to your site so that when people click on the blog, they're also they're also getting credit back to your website, which helps keep your rankings up and running. But the way you want to do that is there's a again with with your blog there's an there's a plugin for authorship that's that is really simple. All you have to do is go set up the Google Plus authorship plugin. Uh, takes two minutes to to set it up, and then all you have to do from there is once it sets up, then you go over to your user profile in WordPress so you go to your user profile and this sets up automatically when you you know when you when your blog is set up you have a admin profile um, and if you need you know if you don't have your information in here your name and address and all that filled in you can you fill it in, but the really the only thing you have to do is uh, where is it here? Oh, right here. When you add that, when you add that, um, when you add that plugin, it sets this piece of this piece up right here and says Google Plus profile information. And all you have to do is go to your Google. Plus page, and if you go to your profile the page, that's usually the easiest. Let's just go to home. Can you take stuff from LinkedIn and transfer it over to this? Um, you can share stuff from LinkedIn into here. Link it back to me. Page, come on. There we go. You say you raised your rankings. I mean, what is it like a top ten listing of bloggers or something? Yeah. No, no I mean, you know, search it, it's, it affects the search results. Okay. So I'm going to grab my profile here. So I go to my profile page. You'll see this at the top. This URL up here is what you'll copy. So you'll copy that big long URL through the number if it says post after, you know, or anything after that. All you want is through this big long number right here and then once you grab that you paste that right here and save the change and that's tied your that's tied your Google Plus page 
and your uh, and your blog together. So it's really it's it's an easy easy connection. <laughs> Says you. <laughs> Okay. I got as far as set up Google Plus authorship plugin, but I forgot to write down okay. where I find that. So then, <laughs> yeah, once you once you get the plugin set up under plugins, add new, then you go to your users, you go to your to the users in your um, in your dashboard. Now we're we're still on WordPress. WordPress. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're in users in WordPress. Your profile, okay. Okay. okay, and then when you'll scroll down on that profile, you'll see Google Plus. You'll see Google Plus profile information, okay. and then what I always do is I just open another window, another tab, and have Google Plus open. Open Google Plus in that. Grab the URL. Just copy. Okay. From your address bar in WordPress. So then I mean you, in Google Plus. I'm, I'm, I'm so, you, you do something with the Google Plus profile information. That what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to grab this you're going to grab this information from your from your Google uh, Plus page and paste it in your user profile. You paste you paste it into the into that profile to the user profile spot on your on your blog. Are you recording this, Gary? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's recording, so we'll. Okay. I'll, I'll paste it up in the in the site later tonight. And that's it. That's how you establish that authorship. But again, the the reason you want to do that is because now it's it's giving you credit. Let's say that, for example, let's go back to my article. That uh, let's go back to my article that Michael shared. Now, if somebody. If he shared this and he said check out a great article you know on for your company strategies and he's he's pulled the link to it so he's it's linking back to me but the other thing but the nice thing is because it's linking back to me now I have another I have another uh, URL besides mine pointing to this site so if somebody grabs your article like you Joe you were saying what if they you know from somebody takes it and Shares your article someplace else, or you know, put, puts it on New York Times, or puts it on someplace else. Well, if they take the article as a whole and they and they and they share it, then it's it's listing me as the author because that article has got my name on it. It's got my picture. It's got my profile tied to it. So if somebody takes the article exactly. And copies that and uses it and calls it their own even and, and takes out my references. Google already knows who was first. Google already says that, hey, this article was originally authored by Gary Wagner, 800 Biz Ninja Marketing. So you may be stealing it, but we're not giving you credit for posting it because it's not original content. This is the original content because we've already we've already established the authorship of that article. So that's one of the things, and and believe me, the 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 search engines know duplicate content. They'll they can they'll spot duplicate content. So I don't know if you remember, but the two or three blog posts that I did, they were done so. Far apart, mm -hmm. but I have forgotten that one was almost exact repeat. Yeah. The first one. Right. That is that count against me? Do I no. to take that? Down? No, it's okay. I mean, they, they're, it's they're not gonna. You know, it's it's okay to re, to refresh a page or if you rewrite it and say you know revisit it. That's that's okay. Um, Google's not gonna index it twice typically for you, just only once. 
but you can but if you take the blog article and respin it to say you know we originally wrote an article back in you know 2010 about negative reviews but since then you know and the article reference is this but since then we've seen this and this and this happen mm -hmm. now you've taken the same content you've just refreshed it you didn't have to go about rewriting it you just refreshed the content but now it's a new article mm -hmm. and they'll treat it as a new article so the the, the, the idea is you know we want to have as much content out here building on our keyword bases building on the keywords that are important to us that uh, the more we have the better we're going to show up so that's why that authorship is a is an important piece all right so you know when you get ready you know if we don't have that if you have problems setting it up let me know and I'll walk you through the process again but it's 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 really simpler than it that it explains. <laughs> so this this is this looks like it's a critical thing to do. It really is because it ties you all together. Yeah, it ties you all together. It definitely does. Yeah, yeah. Even though you put a link at the bottom in the resource box of the of the article you make that has the link to your website or to you, even though you do that, this still is one more piece that this is the piece that Google likes. This is the this is to appease Google's sense of of, uh, of of original original content, okay. Where you if you share it to Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or StumbleUpon or Reddit or any of those sites, that's a different story. And that's why that author's box really comes back to play is because there that creates that link back that those sites don't have. But the authorship piece is what ties Google back in. Okay. So that's why you do that. Okay. So that's the Google authorship plugin. Um, the other thing I wanted to, I wanted to go over today was I wanted to um, I wanted to touch base on another little tool that was that I think would be a real uh, that could be real beneficial, and that is uh, creating a slide presentation webinar type slide presentation for anything that you might be doing. So let's say Dale for example, you want to do a uh, maybe you take your slides from your seminar that you've done, your PowerPoint slides, and you can utilize a program like SlideShare, put those online and now you can embed that in your website or you can, you know, it's visible so people can search it. Um, but it's a really it's a it's a a good way to again expand your visibility to give some multimedia aspect to your to your site yeah, from PowerPoint. You can do it from PowerPoint, but if you don't have PowerPoint or you're not familiar with how to use it or whatever it might be, there's an easy way to do it that everybody has if you've got anything Google, and that's Google Drive. So we're going to start with Google Drive. Um, Google Drive is basically Google's Google Docs. It's the new. It's what used to be Google Docs, but now it's called Google Drive. But really, what Drive is is a online repository of documents um, that you want to make available in the cloud. So what Google Drive does is it says, okay, if you need, uh, so, so let's say for example, I get, I want to, I'm going to do a presentation, and um, I, for some reason, my flash drive doesn't work, or for some reason my computer didn't work, and I borrow somebody else's, but now I don't have the, now I don't have because presentation would be on this computer, I don't have access to it. Well, if it's in Google Drive, I can go from any computer anywhere, and I can grab that presentation and pull it right in. So all I'd have to do is grab that, pull it in, and now I've got the, there's my presentation. But you want to put it in. I, I would have uploaded it from my desktop. So I always do that. Even though the presentation, every time I do one, it's always on my flash drive, I still do it here 
because I want that backup just in case. All right. So with Google Drive, that's the. Uh, but the other thing is, so that's if you have it. But if you, what if you don't have PowerPoint? What if you don't know how to use it? What if you don't have a, a software? Don't go out and buy it. Go Google Drive and create. And when you go create, we're going to create a um, a new presentation. Okay, so I can do a folder, I can do a document, I can do a spreadsheet, whatever I might want to do. But I can do a. Uh, uh, but I'm going to do a presentation. So let's click presentation. Are you saying you don't need um, PowerPoint? PowerPoint. Do it without it. This will do it for you. Yeah. So, all right. So let's pick a theme. So we're gonna let's say oh, this one looks kind of cool. I, I like the Trek one. So let's say Trek. We're gonna use that as our theme. We'll say okay. So will we see ads in the future again? Skills required Google Drive. <laughs> It's already built in, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a piece of you know everything. Google is, I mean, Google is trying to control everything, so they want to be in the. I mean, they're already in the mobile app business with the Google Play Store. They're in the they're in the documents and Word and competing with Word and Office and that because between this and Gmail, uh, you know, they've got the spreadsheets. Everything's here. So you, you're you know the the need for the for the latest version of Office. Who knows? May or may not, you know, may or may not be as effective. Now, they're not, they're, they're not always, you know, they're not as powerful present I mean, as software. This, for example, the presentation software doesn't, at least I shouldn't say it doesn't. I what little I've played with it, I haven't done, I haven't figured out how to do uh, in slide transitions. So, like for example, my PowerPoint slide may come up with a you know, rules uh, engaging in Facebook. And then I click the button and it drops down, you know, first create posts that people like and share. Second, you know, share pictures and videos. You know, third, share, you know, ask questions. So, it, you know, it, it drops in without changing slides. Okay, so I would have to change slides and, 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 uh, and this. And, and again, there may be ways to do it and they may, they may expand on it, but I don't, at this point, you know, I'm, I want to show you. Me. Okay. Because <laughs> totally. I'm, I'm not... You Okay. I don't do PowerPoint, so I don't but you've seen my presentations, yeah. so you know when I when I you know I'll have one slide up there on the screen, and then it'll drop down the next line, oh, yeah. and the next line, and the oh, next line. Okay. So there may be three or four on the screen. Okay. That's an in slide transition. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't. At least I don't. I haven't figured out how to do it yet. But with this. So so if if you were using this. And you sort of wanted to segue. You just create a new slide each time. Or, or have one of those laser pointers. Yeah. That do it all on one. Page. Yeah. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a. I want to create a slide presentation for you. Um, so I'm going to take the title and I'm going to say the negative. No, the effect. Excuse me. The effect of negative. Reviews on Facebook. Okay. When you have Gmail, you have access to all this stuff. Yep, it's a free program. You just uh, all you have to do is just uh, set it up, create, you just activate the Google Drive account, and I'm going to say Gary Wagnon, Ninja Marketing. Oops. Ninja Marketing Dojo, and put the address to the dojo. Here's another dumb question: Is this a TV screen you have here? Or is, that's just it's a TV. Yep, yep. The, all of the all the flat screens now have. Well, how do you get the TV stuff off it? <laughs> you just uh, you just you, it, you give up in your input settings. It lets you yeah. pick a uh, pick an input. That's in this particular case, it's the uh, RGB input or the yeah, HDMI input. So yeah, I do that. So I can take my TV screen, my 42 inch Sony screen, plug your laptop into it. Here's how old it is. Yeah. I think I still have a laptop too. 
So I plug the laptop into it. And... It probably yeah. has it it's a, if it's a fairly late model. Oh, yeah. You, there's there's about four ways to connect. Yeah. S video, which is a little round pin, the flat pin like this, uh, the like is a, like a printer cable, and then uh, HDMI, which is a, another a little wider flat type of USB pin. But yeah, any of those plug right in there. So what I'm bored of, just sit there and do a presentation. Yep, you can. <laughs> yep, exactly. All right, so so we do. So we'll start this. Here's a slide. So we create that. Um, there's our title. So we want to say uh, new slide. So it adds our second slide, formats it. So we're going to say this one is. Uh, um, we're going to say. Um, Let's see here. We're going to say engagement. Uh, so I want to use engagement as the second slide. And, uh, and so I'm going to drop down here and now I'm going to insert a picture. So I go insert image. And I want to choose an image. So you don't even need a monitor. You just uh, have a TV screen there. Great. Yeah. Is that what you do? Yep. That's what you do. What do you do? Do you do the same thing? No. <laughs> so you, instead of having a typical monitor, you have a TV screen. You could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could tie it to your regular TV screen. Is that what you use yourself? No, I have I have, I have two monitors in my office that I use, and <laughs> you don't have the tuner on, but I. But you can. So I will say engagement. Um, uh, engagement. Is the key to? That's a negative review right there. Yeah. <laughs> Engagement is the key to success in Facebook. Okay, so we'll do that, and now I'm going to say add another slide. We'll say new slide, and in this particular one, we're going to talk about edge rank. Edge rank. And I'm going to drop in another image, insert image from my computer, I think algorithm. So we're going to drop this image in. Images are great to, inc to include because it gives you a, a I mean, it, it helps kind of illustrate your point. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to say, uh, I better think I probably should define edge rank. So I'm going to say, the uh, three factors edge rank are, and maybe we want to bullet point these. Affinity, weight, and time decay. So affinity. We'll say this is interaction with pages. Weight likes, comments, or shares. Ooh, that was really good. <laughs> like likeies. Likeies. Like we like ease the and uh, uh, duration of post. Okay, what's the connection with the Greek restaurant? They let me use the room. <laughs> a playing cards out here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We always compete with the uh, with the bridge group out here. Okay, so we'll say that one. Now let's do new slide. Uh, and let's say uh, uh, negative, negative oops, feedback. Uh, new edge rank factor. All right, so let's put in, and let's get another image. So we're going to say, add another image, and um, 
about this one? So the ease with which you do this, it sounds like it in great part depends on whether you've already created a personal library of images that you can quickly Well, choose. yeah. And, yeah, I mean, what I did is I just went back through my images that I already had. And, and I'm actually, what I'm doing is I'm creating a slide, a slide presentation based on my last post. Mm -hmm. So I could, I could actually plug this in and reference back to the post as far as I, you know, explaining it. I could embed it in the post if I wanted. But yeah, I have a I already just pulled images that I had done. Or, or you know, if you if you're thinking about it, if you're creating it, you know, you sort of create the outline for the topics you want to cover in the in the slides, and then you go, okay, what's a good visual depiction of that particular slide? So, so you just go search on Google. That's what I do. That's exactly what I do. I just go to Google and I say, okay, show me some. Give me a some you know a computer frustration one. And I come up with an image like that, you know, Facebook frustration or whatever. And and so, you look at the cartoons. I, I just no, I just do a Google search for I an image. I just go Google search images, and it'll show me anything. It could be a, it could be a cartoon. It could be. But then, do you set up a folder of those images that you've chosen? Yeah, so I have a. So you set up a folder. And in my folder. in my articles folder, I have a I have an image directory inside there. That I just drop all these in, or a social media, and I just drop all of them in. So when I, so if I've used them before, like the ring picture, I've used that mm. probably four or five times before, because okay. it's the best depiction of engagement in my mind. <laughs> so, so negative, um, negative. Can you do? Can you do another one? Just to see. No. Can you access another one? Another. Sure. Yeah, well, I've got so I just let's say let's just delete that one, and then I want to insert another one. Insert, insert image. Was I under frustration? Well, I already I pulled some off, so I didn't have to. Oh, so I, I didn't search. I already saved them that I've used. But I mean, I could go. It's easy. All I would have to do is go up here and say, let's just say Google. Yeah. <laughs> so let's say uh, uh, oh no <laughs> there you go what's a movie about? Oh, yeah, a alright so there's a good graphic right there there's a good head not the one below it that's a good graphic right there for head hunter so we could say Executive, let's try that. Let's say, uh, all right, there's a good one. How about this one? So, yeah, you just go through and find, uh, yeah, that's it. There you go. There's a good one. Of course, that's that's a Getty images. So you have to be careful with these because those are copyrighted images. Uh, you have to pay for those to use those. But you couldn't put that on mine right now, could you? Because you don't. You have to have some connections with GoDaddy. I have to have access to your site before but you, I can do. But you, but if you have that, you could do that. I kept uh, turning the computer on one day and see my face turn into I could. a character from out of uh, Africa. Or something. Yeah, but yeah, but trust me, I don't, I don't, I don't have the time to mess with anybody else's on the site for fun. Because, <laughs> because they're going, they're going. Hey, fix mine, fix this, fix that. Get with you. So, all right. So that's how you do it. So let's just use this one. We'll stick him in here. And so we say negative actions. R, uh, R. Just what is edge rank? Is that your invention? Hmm? It is. What? Edge rank? No, no, edge rank is Google's, I mean, it's Facebook's, um, it's Facebook's algorithm on how they decide who shows up on pages. Oh. So that's something they did. I mean, I just, so uh, negative actions are, let's see, negative actions are, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, 
no um, unliking, let's see, uh, negative comments. Um, it can be um, unliking a page, unliking page, uh, reporting as spam. Okay, so those are the factors. So anyway, so we can go on and finish it, but that gives you. So we've created basically a slideshow. So we want to see what it looks like. So here's our presentation. So we're going to say um, we're going to pull up our, our slide presentation. So I, I have a question, particularly in terms of negative comments. So you know, I know I get personally annoyed with all the the partisan political statements. Right. Regardless of which side they're on, I just get personally annoyed that people are, you know, just so catty about things. Right. Is does that count? You know, those negative comments count against the entry? If okay. if somebody rabid, well, that makes me feel much better because because. I just get so annoyed, and I'm you know I'm happy to know that maybe Facebook thinks that it's annoying too. If yeah, if somebody, I mean, if if you're making, um, if somebody is, you know, is if somebody doesn't like the you know what's said and makes a, a comment, then they're going to that's going to be a mm -hmm. you know that that can be an effect on their ranking. So here's our slideshow. We've got it ready. So we go, okay, the effects of negative reviews on Facebook. And then we say, okay, uh, engagement is the key. And, you know, your three factors of edge rank are, but now there's a new factor that's negative feedback. And negative feedback is this. So you need to, you know, and then we'll, we'll put another slide that wraps it all up. So we've created our presentation, and it's just a, you know, you just roll through it like a regular PowerPoint. So now all I have to do is... I just, uh, uh, it's our, I, let's see here, I want to save it. So it's already saves it all, it automatically saves it in Google Drive. So let's go back here and, oops, new slide. Cancel that. Uh, oops, let's see here. So I go to the presentation from the beginning. That's how it would start. Click through it. All right, so now I can share it. I can rename this presentation. So maybe I want to name it uh, uh, Negative Feedback. Gotta go. That's really interesting. Now. Okay. Space age. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna say okay, and now we've named it, and um, it's it's saved now in my Google Drive. So that's how you create that. So. So you. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Well, get yeah, get a hold to the get a hold to the yeah. Sue and let me know, and we'll get that other stuff going for you when you're ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, now you know, I, I can help you work through it. So. Okay, All right. So in terms of, you know, I guess my question is in terms of prioritizing what things I tackle of all mm -hmm. the, the, the things that I've been learning in here. It sounds like figuring out the Google authorship and Google Drive and Google Plus and getting more active on doing that, getting more active with blogging, and where does LinkedIn come in? And LinkedIn groups. And the LinkedIn groups are, I mean, the, the, it's pro a better source for, uh, you know, the best source for LinkedIn is sharing the blog articles and the, the, that kind of information, sharing that over into LinkedIn. And, and there's a way to do that? Yep. And, and yep. how does one do that? Um, what you do is you just, when you create that blog article, uh, you can share it and there is a, um, uh, it will let you, 
there's there's one of the programs that will let you share that to a group rather than just to a just to your LinkedIn page. But even if you just shared it to your LinkedIn profile and then from there added it to your groups. But how does one do that? All right. Let's pull this up here. So let's go back to my article here. Um, and I'm going to go back to the article. Oops, edge marking, sorry. So we've got the, we're at the article, we can go to LinkedIn. This should connect with my LinkedIn. So when it does, it's going to say post to updates, post to groups. Okay. So if I say post to groups, now it's going to say, okay, which group you want to put it in. Oh, okay. And that's so how like you do. if you're with Link Local Tucson. Yep. Oh, yep. You okay. just start typing a group name and it says linked. There we go. And the subject of it and the details. So we can give us a, a detail on a subject here and, and that automatically posts it to the groups. To okay. the group. And to do a second group, you would just do Tucson. So you can post it to multiple groups right there. Oh, okay. Uh, and it, it's again, it's just a matter of putting in any groups that you belong to okay. and, uh, and then hit the share button. And then it, it comes up as a new discussion or? Starts as a new discussion. Okay. Starts as a new discussion. Yep. That's how you do that. And in the detail section, do you, do you, it, do you it, say something about, um, you know, what like yeah. a question, you know, what? My, here's my, my latest article on uh, negative feedback in Facebook uh, can, you know, is, is, is brought about by, you know, the people making comments or unliking or sharing. Here's the percentages, some numbers. You know, what do you do to, uh, you know, what are some things that you, you know, do you want a good one for this one would be, for example, say, what would you do if you find a, a, an article you didn't like? Would you comment on it? Would you unlike it? Would you hide it from a page? Would you report it as spam, or would you uh, unlike the page? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and I I guess I'm not that clear about Facebook. There's a button to say you un, you unlike a page. Mm -hmm. You well, you can unlike the page. You can Anybody? hide it from a you hide a post from your timeline, mm -hmm. or you can hide all that person's content. Okay, that's oh, and is that that little. At the right, far right. far right, far right side, there is a. Uh, um, let's see here. Let's go Facebook. Just don't want to bookmark that. So let's say. Um, See if I can, here's a page. So all right, here's Astro. Mm -hmm. So if I go over here on the side, mm -hmm. um, and I click that, then it says I can hide, mm -hmm. or I can report the story as spam. Mm -hmm. If I want to hide it, it's going to say, do I want to hide just this post, mm -hmm. or do I want to hide all posts from Astro Auto Repair and Ina? Okay. Uh, if I report them as spam, it goes to Facebook as a spam report. Okay. And then if I want to unlike the page, all I have to do is highlight, go over their name, uh -huh. and it pops up their little business card, and I can go unlike. I can click that button uh -huh. and unlike them. Oh, okay. Well, I guess my question, you know, goes back to what shows up on my timeline, because I thought that. Things that show up on my timeline don't show up on other people's timeline. So it's just if I'm so personally affronted that I don't even want to see their posts that yeah. bother to do this. And this news feed, not timeline. It's it's your news feed that shows up in your 
your okay. news feed. Okay. But yeah, if you're if 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 something they say is so you know offensive or or maybe it's you know it doesn't even have to be offensive. You know, I mean, like, like people playing you know games oh, and they I, have ten in a row. Yep, yeah, exactly. I hide all of those. I always, I mean, if it, as soon as I see a game mm -hmm. of any kind pop up in my mm -hmm. timeline, I mean, in my news feed, mm -hmm. you get me saying that. As soon as I see a game pop up in my news feed, I immediately go hide, mm -hmm. and it's going to say, "Do you want to hide the content from this person? Mm -hmm. Do you want to hide the this post, mm -hmm. or do you want to hide all the activity from this game?" And I hide all activity from that game, and I never see them again. Oh, that would be lovely. Yeah, because I, I mean I don't care about seeing the uh, I don't care about I, I don't want to hide their you know their stuff, but I, I don't want to see their game. Yeah, the the only you know I I have one former client that I still sort of follow, and I can sort of tell about how busy she is, but how you know how, how many, many games, she games in a row she's done for, uh -huh. you know, for an hour and a half. Yeah, right. Okay. And it's like yeah. I don't have time to deal with those. Yeah. But but there but there again, but but the other thing that could happen is another another way you might reason you might want to hide somebody is because um, let's say you've got I, I was I friended a kid that was in the youth group I was working with back in Arkansas and, and everything of course the kid's now thirty two three <laughs> four years old so but everything he was putting on there was you know foul language and mm -hmm. offensive stuff and I've said you know I just don't want to see it anymore yeah. mm -hmm. and so I just I just hid him mm -hmm. all of his activities I didn't unfriend him mm -hmm. I just hid all of his activities yeah so I don't see anything he writes but he could still tag you he can still tag me he can he still he still shows his friend mm -hmm. he still sees my stuff but I don't see his and but remind me how you tag again the 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 t with the at sign the at sign yeah, to start sorry. typing their name but the other thing that can happen is I had a guy recently send me a friend request I accepted his friend request and every every post he made was check out our 90 day weight loss challenge check out we got you know look how much weight we've lost we've lost that weight you know weight loss weight loss weight loss weight loss and I got sick of it because mm -hmm. he never posted anything but weight loss on his personal page and I'm going you know what I don't want to see it yeah. and so I hit him from the timeline I, I mean from my newsfeed I said I don't want to see it anymore done so you you know you it's it wasn't offensive there was nothing wrong with it I just didn't want to see it three times or four times a day that he's you know weighed himself and now he's lost a you know a quarter of a, an ounce you know <laughs> good for you I'm proud of you but you know and then so I could do the same thing, you know, to hide people that are shilling for selling sunglasses or sure. or oh, yeah. sneakers because that's always showing up. Yeah, on my right, right. Pages, yeah. right. Now the other thing that can happen is with a page, you also have the option of restricting what you see. So, like Astro here, for example. So when I go to to the page that I've liked, mm -hmm. then I also have the in, idea the uh, the option of showing them in my news feed or not. I may want to like their page, but I may they I'm, I might have been totally, you know, done with all their posts and never mm -hmm. see anything that is of interest. And so I may say, uh -huh. uncheck that and not show it in my news feed anymore. Mm -hmm. Or I can. The other thing you can do is you can actually get notified. You can set up to be notified when um, when they when anything happens so I can say you know I shoot me a add something to my notification when they've posted oh, okay. and then that way I'll know that you know I can go check it out okay because because I like the, the features from my point of view but from the way Facebook is trying to promote Facebook, uh, as a business online business marketing tool, it means that you know, as a business owner, I have no way to know whether what I've posted may have turned people off and they've stopped, you know, short of unliking my page. There's no way to know whether I've been hidden 
or whether whether they're ever going to see me there, again? Or well, no, there there is. I mean, you can see the you, now you can't see specifics, mm -hmm. but you can see the analytics of the insights on your Google page, okay. and then that'll show you how many people saw it, how many people liked it, commented, shared, mm -hmm. the viral impact of it, the reach of it. You can see all of those things. Mm -hmm. So you have the analytics that will help you filter through that kind of stuff. So, but, but yeah, you can't, I mean, and you need to, you can tell if your numbers are dropping down, then you can say, well, hey, something wrong because I'm, you know, slowly dwindling. I'm not getting any, I'm not getting any, uh, any traffic or, you know, nobody's saying anything. Nobody's commenting. So, and, and eventually that will happen, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're creating content that doesn't invite engagement. Yeah. That's why the engagement aspect is so powerful of it. Because if you just say, uh, you know, if you just say, you know, just realize this Friday, okay, well, that's cool. But how am I going to respond? You know, maybe I would say, yeah, me too. Okay. But not likely. But if it's a, you know, if it's, now, if it's a, uh, you know, something funny mm -hmm. picture-wise or something like that that I can use, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, if it's something like that I could use, then people might comment on it, and, you know, and, and join in. It's like the thing, I mean, crazy, but the, the I had, I don't know how many I ended up with. Let's see here. Um, let's go to my time here real quick. I had... Here's my fun fact of the day. I had one person respond to that. I had several people comment like my last post, but I mean that one. But this one. Oh, oh your bobcat one. That one got. Oh just, gosh, yes. <laughs> where I got too went too far past it. Um, where is it? Here we go. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I got 20, 25 people like the page and over 20 comments on the page. Wow. So the picture of three bobcat, I mean of a bobcat, big deal, but it, but it got people yeah. engaged. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that, you know, um, that's, that that that's the reason, but you you really have to make that happen with the with the business page because your personal it doesn't matter if they don't engage it's still going to show up. You're right now they may change that at some point in time, but right now your personal everything you write personally shows up in all of your friends' newsfeed, but your business page doesn't. Your business page won't if they're not engaging over time. If they're not fitting that, if they're if they unlike or are you know or hide the page or hide the post, then there's a good chance you're gonna you're you're gonna dwindle off and you're you're not gonna show up as often. Well, I know you you've mentioned that it's important to be posting from your business page, mm -hmm. but what I what I've noticed is when I post from my business page. Nobody ever engages. When I post from my personal page, I often get comments. It's because, yeah. And, and you know, particularly in my situation, because I am my business. Right. Does it make that much difference that they're commenting on my personal page? Um, it does. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't. But again, that, that's a good example of why. You know, in your case, your your comments on your business page and your personal page are pretty much similar. But, um, you know, people don't want to be, they don't want to see too much business related stuff on their, yeah, per, on their exactly. personal timeline. But th that's a good example of the fact that there's not a lot of engagement from other people in the past, so they're probably not seeing your, your information. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I guess, I think we're, we're getting the comments to what I post on my personal timeline. 
you know, helps sort of, usually what I post in my personal timeline are, are things that are, are meaningful to me yeah, personally. Right, right. And, you know, I'm hoping in a way that that attracts like-minded people it does. with similar values That's and, and might say, Oh, she's part of my tribe. I want you know. I need some marketing. I want to yeah. work with her. That's that's the that's what you do because what happens is you want to get, you want to build that that personal relationship so people feel like they know you, mm -hmm. like and trust you. That's the personal side of it, mm -hmm. regardless of what happens business wise. So they got to feel like that they're comfortable with you as a as who you are, mm -hmm. as to you know regardless of your business yeah. expertise. So you have two sides. The personal side, you build your that personal rapport and give people an insight. Like I said, what business value did posting the picture of those bobcats have? None. But it's you know, yeah, that's who you are. But you can turn around and share, you know, and like the pictures of the grandbaby, you know, uh, that doesn't have any pic. But but again, people then go, oh well, you know, he's the guy's, you know, the guy is, you know, he's he's. He's posting, you know, cute pictures of his grandbaby. So you know, he's he's a, he's a grandfather. He's that kind of you know, kind of person you want to you want to associate with. So it's that's really what the your Facebook business, your Facebook personal page is about. Is about building that personal rapport side of things. Okay. So back to this. Back to our. Does that answer your questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. So let's go back to our um, back to our slides now. So we created this slide. We created our slide presentation, and what did I call it? Negative effect. Somewhere in here. Negative reviews, I thought it was. There it is, negative feedback. Okay, so here's my here's my um, presentation. Now what I want to do is I want to I need to download it. I didn't want to open it. So let's just go back here. I just check mark it and then I can say uh, and then I can, um, you know, if you create a new one, you can upload it. But um, you can share it from here. Uh, I can organize it. I can trash it. Let's see here. What I want to do is I want to download it. So I come over here to the more options and I go to download. Because I want to load this into, I want to load this onto a, a different program besides, so that I can make it. Because I've got it in mind, so I can access it here. I can share it. That's fine. But I want to put it. What I want to do is, I really want to put this in SlideShare, so that I can, so that it shows up then on my LinkedIn page. Uh, people that can subscribe to my slides here. I can embed it in in uh, other presentations or other pages I'm I'm on. So I'm going to say I'm going to download this as a PowerPoint. So I just pick it and I say save the file. Now, have you talked about SlideShare before? We've talked about it before, but I want to. I thought I'd go through it yeah. again. Yeah, please. So let's see. Okay. All right, so that's where it went. So we're going to save that down. So I've got it downloaded now. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go to SlideShare. SlideShare is a free program. They do have a paid version, a paid upgrade like everybody does. And so all you do is you sign up for it. It gives you, with the, with the basic version, you get um, so much space. Let me see, what is what does it give you here? Um, the basic version, you've got... Um, it doesn't tell me what you have. <laughs> um, it gives you a limited amount of space is really what it does. 
So, oops, didn't mean to leave slides here. Go back here. Slide share. So I'm going to log in. You can log in with LinkedIn, you can log in with Facebook, or you can use your, um, you can just use an email address, either one. Again, oops, I get the wrong email password. Okay. <laughs> it's been kind of, the Wi-Fi has been kind of funky. Oh, I mean, I got, I got the. No wonder I think I got this. Huh? Yeah, man, it's been draggy. Yeah. There we go. Helps if I get the right email address in there. <laughs> okay, so once I log in, now all I have to do is right here on the top or right here, we just say upload. So I upload the file, pick the file I want to upload, and it's right here. The downloads folder. Double check the folder it's in, it's in the Ninja Marketing Downloads folder. Okay, it's not finding it in the folder. I'm gonna go back to the other. Let me go to the other door here. So we're gonna go users. There we go. And we open that. And it starts the upload process. It's already done. I can title it. I can tag it with. I can tag it with uh, keywords. So I'm going to say Facebook. So Facebook. Uh, edge rank. Um, negative. Feedback. Pick a category. Yep. <laughs> okay. Of course. Like yeah, I know, isn't it though? <laughs> Can I tell the story while you're doing that, or is it, are you going to get? Let's see. Let's try this one more time here. Open. <laughs> tell me it's uploading it. Okay, and then it'll convert it. So it it, it uploads it. It converts it to their format. And so once it does, then it's then it's available. So yeah, you can go ahead and tell the story while we're waiting on this to convert, if you want. Well, the saga continued with Gary's car and his check engine light comes back on. <laughs> so we scan the computer and it's all these evaporative emissions codes, evap system. 
So I go and I copy about 100 pages of technical documents on how to diagnose the EVAP system. And so we take the engine cover off and we're looking at all this, this stuff and everything that we can get to, because a lot of it's under the car, I'm sure. And uh, so we decide we're going to look at the data with the scan tool. So we're going past the car and giving us, what's that hose doing there? There's a hose that's loose when he got his oil changed on my recommendation that he put synthetic oil and he took it to a place. Apparently what they did is when they checked the air cleaner, they, they uh, loosened the, yeah, popped off this, this vacuum hose that caused all this, these uh -huh. other evap things. <laughs> it back up. So we hooked it back up and now, so far anyway, the lights, <laughs> like, clear the lights and they haven't come back on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, I don't know if it was the evap system, but something on my old car, you know, kept the engine light kept coming on. Yeah. And everybody was under the hood checking it out, and I was paying for diagnostics. And, <laughs> That's and, what he was getting ready to do. <laughs> and, you know, finally, is it someone checked the gas cap. Oh, yeah, gas cap will turn those lights on. Yeah. And, you know, it turned out that I had a faulty gas cap. But, yeah. but, mm -hmm. yeah, and I wasn't letting it click twice to make sure it was tight. You know, less, well, we than, less than that. ten dollars right. for a new gas cap. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We'd already we'd done that one already. We, we, we got that one fixed. That's why we were down there and came back on. Yeah. Okay, so they're not letting it. So this there's a problem on their server right now. It's letting this mm -hmm. upload, but. If you're uploading a PowerPoint or a PPTX, try saving as a PDF and upload it. Okay. Now is that the restaurant server you're talking about? No, this is no, no this is uh, SlideShare is not letting oh. it convert. So, but it, it's saying that it's failed because I didn't have. Uh, probably this is a temporary glitch on our server. Try again in two to three minutes. So we'll try. Well, I'll try it again, but. Um, Something I've all kind. Of, I've had to because I have to get ready for after the class. Kind of looking at my Pima County repair information while you're talking. Yeah. And it's just been all this crap go on with it. You know, that I haven't seen it before. And yeah, we've had to restart the computer several times. Yeah. Of course, the uh, the Vista, Microsoft. You know, they always choose Friday afternoon to do. Update uh, this updates and that. And everything. But it's, no, it's been really great. Yeah, mine, it's been, I can tell it's slow. Well, let's take one that I've already done and we'll see that. So, so you uploaded, you can even upload a slide out of a, uh, out of a PDF form. So you don't even have to create it this way. You can create it as PDFs and do it. But let's say um, you've got it, you know, you've got a slide show that you've done, presentation. Um, you've got the option of, uh, then you can use the slideshow. So here's the slideshow. Now it's it's up here. It's mastering online marketing. Um, I've got. Yeah, I can see how many people have. This been viewed 233 times on SlideShare. So 233 times has this been this has been viewed. This is again. That's you know a huge number for that you know the slideshow that I didn't really. Yeah. I it can also you can also embed it, so I have it right now. It's on my LinkedIn profile page, so I can paste it in there. So you know, so let's say you wanted to do a presentation on. Uh, so let's say you were doing a, uh, you know, a presentation for. Uh, for art, places around for cat. So you just say, okay, here's you know, here's some of our slides. Here's you know, here's some cuts of us. The video, you know, we provide bang, bang, bang. You know, this is the stuff we do. It's this, this, this. It has all of these, and you could go through really a a, a talking point presentation of what her workshop is, what's in it for them, you know, what's in it for the, the for the group, what's in it for the. Uh, for the, the people that attend, you know, 
what's she going to offer, what does she bring, what's she supply, and you, you could have a whole PowerPoint presentation that you would, because assume that you would, you know, that you would be sitting in front of a decision maker, you know, at a, let's say it's an art presenters conference. I, I, I presented to those guys last year. Um, so let's say there's 40 art presenters from around the country there. And you 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 got you know five minutes to make a pitch. Thing, yeah. Here it is. Here's my slide. So we do this, we do this, we do this, and you you make the slides more narrative than you would if you were presenting a live workshop. But because you have to be a little you know you want to be a little more narrative about it. But but you could create that whole you create that presentation so that in essence what you're doing is you're you're letting this be your silent salesperson. Post it on Facebook, post it on embedded in YouTube. I mean, excuse me, LinkedIn, embedded in LinkedIn. It is a, uh, uh, it makes a, a really uh, strong statement of, you know, what you do. Um, because what I was showing them was, if you see right here, this has been viewed. This slideshow that I did a while back, it's been viewed to over two hundred times in SlideShare. Oh wow! Not. From my end, from uh -huh. other people have just found it. But they find it. They have to go to slide share. Slide share. They could. It could have been used. Somebody else could have used it and marked it as favorite and shared it. But it, typically, it looks like it's been because as you get more traffic, as you have more, you know, as you get more, um, as you get more prolific with slide share, you see. I mean, it's already giving you related video. A related oh, slides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you can make it into one of those related slide sections. Mm -hmm. But if you embed it in like Facebook, is that a counter? Does that come back to this? Yeah. Say, okay. So, yep. Uh, yep. So not just in slides. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I'll do that. That's so anywhere right. you embed it. it yeah. So you can share the. So you can share it. Yeah. You know, you can just share it anywhere you want. So you can you can take the slides and put it on Facebook or. LinkedIn, it automatic. There's a there's a um, there's a LinkedIn plugin that will I add on program in LinkedIn that will automatically connect your SlideShare account to LinkedIn. Cool. So if I post that one I just did, you know, once that posts up there, it'll automatically get kicked over into LinkedIn and show up on my LinkedIn page. But if I wanted to, so if I want to share it anywhere else, I can. But if I want to embed it and say my blog, I go up here to the, I go up here to the embed section, the embed key at the top, I say copy, and then I go to my blog, like I was going to write an article. And let's see, let's just pull the article. Let's pull up a new one here. So I'm going to pull up. Let's do a new post. I don't want to mess up this one. Yeah, don't mess up. So I'll say add to new, add new. So I'm going to create a new post. And I come down here in the body of the post. This is the one time you would switch to text as opposed to visual. You see the visual and the text over here. This is the one time you would switch to text option. Because what I'm doing is pasting code, not verbiage. And then I come here and I say paste. And um, they paste it in there. And then we can say, let's see, I'm going to save this as uh, mastering online marketing. Slide, slide, <laughs> duh, slide, show, and I'm going to save the draft, and then I'm going to preview it. There's the slideshow. And that's on LinkedIn? This is in, uh, 
this is in my blog. Oh, blog. Yeah, this is in my blog. And it, like I said, I just copied and pasted it there. Now it's on LinkedIn. Uh, this are that already will be on LinkedIn, so I can go to LinkedIn over here, and we should see the SlideShare app application. So if I go to my profile page. And I scroll down my profile page. Scroll down my profile page. <laughs> I ought to turn on my hotspot. Maybe it'll get better. And there they are right there. Here are here are my link. Here are my slide share presentations already up here. So it's um, and there it is. And then I can just click through the slides. Um, and there's the whole you know the whole presentation. Um, now to find that to where you set that up on LinkedIn, it's up here under um, think. used to have a section for it but now it's now they have changed it out of here and I think it's added directly into your profile so if we want to add so let's see. I gotta be under edit. That's why I'm not getting it. I have to be under edit my profile. Catch up. Okay, so I have a section under. I have a section down here in my summary for. Um, Add a link to a video, image, document, or presentation. So you don't even have to add the image in. You don't even have to add the application in there anymore. All you have to do is just say, I want to add this, and and there's the link to the... And is that where you also link to your blog? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you link to your blog. You can link to your videos. If you've got a YouTube video that you put out there, so Kath's videos can be all linked in here. Um, yeah, all of it puts in. So you just add that link in, and now you've got your now your your slideshows are you know pulls right in there. So that's a you know this this is to me is a, a really I love the slideshare thing because that is it, it gives you the ability to make a presentation to somebody that you don't know you're making a presentation to. You know, you create, so that's what you really think about, and this is what I would ask you, what I encourage you to do is think about, and maybe we, maybe we try to do this over the next week or two, is think about putting together a slide presentation for your business. Not necessarily creating the slides yet, but, but create the, you know, create the layout, create the, create the content that you would want. So what are the, you know, what are 10, 12, 15 whatever it takes slides content wise text wise that'll demonstrate that that will explain what you want to to do so put together those you know those five or you know five ten whatever it takes independent slides content and then and then we can 
and then we can try to work through the process of putting them into, you know, if you want to try to put them into Google Drive and presentation that way, go ahead and do that, and then we can set these up and, and share them. But I think, you know, put it together, and then if you want to even do it on a, you know, if you do it on a document or whatever, we can, uh, our Google Drive, you can e email it to me, and then we can put them up on the, we put them up on the screen and let everybody go. Yeah, I like that, or that doesn't make sense, or see how you, how you, how you feel about it. Because I think it would be a good idea. You know, we, we're so close to our business that you go. Well, I understand exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. But uh, you, I don't. You know, it's it's kind of like I was I was talking to a, uh, I was talking to a client of mine this week, and and she was trying to we were trying to come up with the how to define the concept for her website. She does feng shui. And and she she's I mean really into it and she can, you know, she gets talking about it and, and I'm going she's and I'm saying, tell me what it is you do. What's you know, how do you explain what you do best and how do you, you know, how does that work? And so I'm I'm running this all by her and she's going, well, you know, and the, the flying star does this and it comes into this house and this mansion and, and that means water and this means wind and this means that. So you need to have a three and an eight together means twelve plus five is and I'm going Whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. I said, Okay. If if I let me let me give you my example of what you just said. Okay, so we're going to talk about your website. So I'm going to say, well, first of all, you need to you need to put the uh, alt tags in your images for your H1 and H2 tags in HTML. But you want to use you may need a little PHP here and some JavaScript added into that because that will make sure that you get your SEO done right. And she went, okay, I got it. I don't understand what you just said. I said neither did I. <laughs> so you you know so you get taught we we get so wrapped up in our own. Yeah our own speak that we don't really you know you have to translate it down so what I did with her I actually met with her yesterday and I said okay you let it rip I mean let's let's talk and I, she, I still said well what do you do different what do you do different and so she's talking about the flying star and the you know the houses and the the east west south north direction stuff and you put this and if it's got earth there but it's this star you gotta make it and I'm going okay so I said, so okay, what does I said here's a good analogy for you. A good analogy for me is basically you're saying that as the as the energy in the earth changes, it all it affects you know, different things in our lives and the way we tune into that energy, right? Yeah, that's pretty much right. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, so so basically what you're saying is it's like a cell phone. That, that how does my cell phone know that when somebody dials my number, there's it's getting 50 billion cell phone risk, you know signals in the air right now. I pick up yeah. you know, know billions of them. How does it know to make my ring when it gets when somebody dials my number? I don't know, but I know it works. I know it's an energy related you know, receiver yeah. tuned in to the right frequency. I said, so really what we're talking about with you is tuning in to the right frequency of the energies that affect you right now, right? She said, that's exactly what it does. I said, cool. We got the idea. And we went on and we figured out. And she was in the process. She said, you know, what I do, what most people don't do is most people do the basic stuff, but you miss out a lot of the, the change factors in the, you know, the lunar the fourth house of the planets and the Jupiters and whatever, you know, and how that affects the energies and stuff. I said, yeah. So you understand that stuff. Don't tell me how to do it. Just say, I got a problem, fix it. And so that's where we kind of came out and we, we ended up coming up with some good ideas for it. But, but that's why that, you know, if we create that slide presentation, I think that's a, that would be a good, a good exercise because now you got some eyes that go, huh? What does that mean? You know, what do you mean when you say, yeah. you know, when you say this, and how does that relate back to me? So, think about that, and let's let's we'll work on that yeah, in the next, uh, you know, after mm -hmm. probably the time afterwards, unless you want to talk about it next time. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm going to do uh, an press release this next week while Gary's out. Um, Robin is going to fill in next week, so 
be nice. I'll, she'll let me know if class doesn't mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna be. I will be somewhere between. At, by this time next week, I will.